Are you overwhelmed by the challenge of personalizing communication for thousands of students? That's where Element 451's AI assistants come in. From nudging prospective students to guiding those already on their journey, AI assistants don't just automate, they write, build, and optimize every step of your digital campaigns. Discover how at element451.com slash AI team. Welcome to Talking Tactics, a podcast that gets you results. Each episode features a single tactic implemented with limited resources that move the needle in some way. I'm your host, Day Kibbles, Vice President of Strategy at Ology, a marketing and branding agency for education. Join me every other week for discussions with some of the most clever folks in higher ed worldwide, doing the work day to day, just like you. Talking Tactics is part of the Enrollify Network, a robust collection of podcasts designed to help higher education professionals like you grow. Explore our other shows at enrollify.org or check out some of my personal favorites linked in the show notes. And Rollify is made possible by Element 451, a leading AI-powered, all-in-one student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Check them out at element451.com. Hello, hello, friends. Welcome to Talking Tactics. I am your host, Day Kibbles, and this episode is special because it's different. When I started this podcast, my focus was definitely on admissions and enrollment marketing, but I'm so excited that today's episode officially kicks off our expansion into the alumni world. And if you're as excited about that as me, make sure you follow and subscribe so more and more people can find the show on their feeds. Now, let me tell you, We're kicking off this very first alumni engagement and fundraising episode with possibly the best tactic I have ever heard of ever in my life. Uh, My guests today, Katie Allgood and Brooke Preston from the annual giving and communications and marketing teams at Ohio University, are here to tell us how they saw an increase of both donors and dollars on giving day by, wait for it, letting donors name a squirrel in exchange for their gift. With this tactic, they surpassed a million dollars for the first time ever, exceeding the previous year by almost half a million dollars and increasing the donor count by 752. Honestly, I cannot wait to jump in. Katie, Brooke, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Day. Oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this moment for a year since I first learned about this. Katie, you are the Executive Director of Annual Giving and Brooke is the Associate Director of Creative Strategy two teams collaborating in this awesome tactic. Let's talk about it. Talk to me about Giving Day. How was it going? What was the situation? What did you want to change or improve? Yeah. So um, I've run four Giving Days here at Ohio University now. So as, as any annual giving or really any fundraising professional knows, we're kind of, our hands are, are forced to um, increase our donor and dollar mm. counts year over year. So, you know, the better we do, the higher our goals are going to be the next fiscal year. <laughs> yeah. It's a blast. You can't, you can't be that good. You have to increase by a minimal amount. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So each giving day, we're charged with raising more money from more people. And, yeah. um, you know, we're always asking, asking ourselves, A, how are we going to do that? And B, like, how do we keep it fresh? How do we keep it exciting for yeah. our donors so that the people who gave the last year want to come back and do it again? Yeah. Um, another thing that, that our team really noticed after our first giving day together was that um, for those of you that, that don't know or aren't familiar, giving days are really gamified. So there's matches, matches yeah. and challenges and power hours incorporated throughout the day. Um, and really what we were starting to see was when we weren't offering power hours or incentives, there was serious lag in giving. And so yeah. it was kind of like, okay, our power hours over, womp, womp, gifts are not coming in. What are we going to do to keep that excitement yeah. going? 
And so um, after our first giving day, we knew that that was one of the big things we wanted to solve for the next year. We, we knew we had to raise more money from more people, but we also knew we wanted to see gifts coming in throughout the day, not just when we had donor dollars to match and, um, you know, incentives to give away. I mean, I love how you've described this as basically the impossibly always climbing goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then consistency throughout the day too. So, okay. What idea did you have to, to solve for these two things? Yeah. So, um, we actually were on a, using a a crowdfunding platform called scale funder at the time. Mm -hmm. And our rep there, Teresa Jubert, just an amazing human being and always like, you know, let me just share with you some things that worked really well for other schools over the past years. And she told us about the, um, the squirrel campaign that Ole Miss had launched the previous year. Uh, I made the mistake of mentioning that to my boss a couple of weeks before giving day. And she was like, well, a couple of weeks, yeah, a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks. Oh my God. And she's like, well, we're doing that. Obviously. Oh yeah. I mean, obviously, but "Um, also weeks. Yeah. Weeks. (laughs) So I went to, I called Brooke and I was like, just so you know, we're getting asked to do this thing. Uh, And she's like, okay, cool. Okay. Um, And so, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Brooke and I got on a call with Ole Miss together and they were gracious okay. enough to kind of talk us through their campaign, uh-huh. what they learned, um, you know, what it took to implement. And then um, we kind of strategized internally about what we might be able to roll out again in a couple mm-hmm. of week time frame. I'm t- when I say a couple of weeks, I think we had probably we were like six weeks away from our giving day or something like that. Oh, my goodness. You know, ahead of time, we had some additional incentives and things like that planned for our giving day to try to keep people right. excited during the day. But ultimately, none of the plans that we had in place would have created the excitement that the squirrels ultimately created for us. And I, I will jump on that and also say, independently of that, you know, obviously we start co-planning and working on themes or uh, messaging for giving day far in advance of that. So we were right. well down the line of a cohesive plan. Um, and early on when we were just pitching ideas out from UCM, we did have some squirrel framing, but it wasn't this. It was just sort of like, hey, it would be fun to incorporate the squirrels in some way. And, you know, there was like, yeah, that'd be fun. But it didn't end up being the thing that we had gone for. So when we kind of had to backfill this and say, okay, we're back to squirrels and we have this really great way in that we think we can tack on to what we're already doing. Um, then we already sort of had some content starts and some ideas that we could adapt to the idea. So we, we didn't feel like we were starting creatively from zero. And I think it's important to note that squirrels were already a thing here. So we have gray squirrels on our campus. And it's something that we talk about like a lot, like the students talk about it. There's some myth around it. You know, how the gray squirrels get here, you know, who brought them here. And in doing some research in preparation for this podcast, I did learn that it was in 1908 that Ivy League squirrels were intentionally introduced to our campus from Harvard University. Ivy League squirrels. Yeah, we've got Ivy League squirrels, and I, that's probably why they. Very yeah, that's probably why they call us Harvard on the Hawking. Is part is because of those squirrels. Now that the I think about it, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I I did not know this was a thing. Yeah. Okay. And they're all over campus. I mean, it's it's southeastern Ohio, so that's not that unusual to have squirrels around. They're plentiful all over the region, but this specific kind being on campus and anytime you cross College Green or, you know, you're going from your residence hall to a dining hall, you're probably going to see some squirrels. And uh, so they, yeah, they've become iconic even without too much promotion. Wow. So, I mean, just what I love about it is that using it as this giving tactic is bringing people all the way back to their time on campus, right? Like they're immediately connected, which is what you want. Across generations, because, you know, whether you were here in the 60s or the 90s or now, the squirrels look like the squirrels (laughs) and act like the squirrels. (laughs) How did you stand this up? What role did the squirrels play in that giving day? After we connected with Ole Miss and learned some of their, you know, definitely do this, definitely don't do this, we kind of landed on incorporating squirrels into our giving day platform. So they were a highlight on our main giving day page. And we knew from Ole Miss that we needed to come in with a price point that was low enough that, you know, it felt attainable for a large number of donors to give to. 
but a high enough dollar amount that people weren't just doing it as a total joke. So we weren't getting a bunch of names yeah. that were going to be problematic. And I'm sure Brooke can go into that a little bit more. Um, <laughs> so really, as far as the annual giving team was concerned, we landed on a gift of $18.04. That's our founding years, 1804. Oh, cute. Um, during our giving day, and you could uh, symbolically name a college green squirrel. Um, much more of the implementation, though. So Brooke, I, would you like to talk about that a little, little bit? We went right to work and said, you know, once they had sort of laid out, this is how it's going to work on Skill Funder, and and this is what we'd like to do. That presented our creative challenge of how are we going to execute this in terms of okay, they need some certificates. Are we going to make them digital certificates, or you know, this or that? We didn't have any idea the first year that we did this uh, what the volume would be. So we're like, is it going to be forty or four hundred oh, yeah. or four thousand? And um, we had to be ready to kind of scale up or down yeah. as needed on the day when a day when there's already so much going on because there's already so many segmented emails going out, yeah. social happening throughout the day. I mean, there's just massive coordination across departments happening. And so we wanted the creative to support what was happening and make it fun and engaging without it becoming a, a roadblock or something that slowed down the process rather than enhanced it. Um, so yeah, we I worked with um, our creative director, Erin Harden, who is great. And we worked on uh, designs for the certificates. We wanted it to feel tongue in cheek, but still like, you know, that you're giving something, you're giving your money to your alma mater. And so we wanted it to feel like a mix of sort of a very official. And um, but then obviously, as you're naming a squirrel, so like a little tongue in cheek. So we went really highbrow with the certificate and, you know, calligraphy and <laughs> sort of very formal. Um, and we also had to work on copy and we did have some copy starts from Ole Miss. Like they gave us, they were so generous in giving us what they had for their Grove Squirrel campaign, which is slightly different. And we really wanted to adapt that and make it look and feel like Ohio and make it feel specific to something that no one else had. Um, so, you know, putting in references to um, places on campus um, and it was a really fun chance for us to play with humor a little bit. I have a background in humor writing and um, satire writing. And so it was a joy for me to get to, uh, you know, sort of go outside of the box a little and be a little bit more um, funny or personality driven than we would normally be for an advancement or, you know, a giving campaign. Uh, do you have any kind of examples of what some of that copy is that, like, I'm, I'm specifically yes. curious about the humor part. Yes. So, for example, when uh, when someone on Giving Day went to the Skill, fund or Skill Funder site yeah. and named the squirrel, um, they would get an email back that says, uh, Hi, friend. Congratulations on naming your very own college green squirrel. Your extremely official looking certificate is attached, suitable for gifting, <laughs> framing, and or generally gazing upon. A fun social media graphic is attached too, so you can brag to your friends about naming your squirrel. Thank you for being Forever Ohio and making a gift on, on Giving Day. We're simply nuts about you, the Ohio Squirrel Squad. Oh, cute. Uh, and it's, <laughs> P.S. Let us know if the squirrels had a typo in your certificate. Pause can make it difficult to type. <laughs> Oh, that is so cute. Uh, maybe and my favorite part of that is that they changed the email signature to actually come from the squirrels <laughs> at the <laughs> Illinois Center. Um, well, it worked because the way I found out about this tactic is someone who gave a name to squirrel posted it on social. So there you go. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, we were <laughs> delighted by the uptake of not just people naming the squirrels, but wanting to talk about it online and share it and post it. Yeah. So that was really exciting. So how during I can imagine I've been in uh, a giving day, uh, you know, control center room for 24 hours when I, I was working at Cornell, I got that privilege to do that. It was so much fun. Right. But it's a lot. Like you said, Brooke, there's so much happening throughout that day. So like what was the process of receiving names, making the certificate, sending these emails? Like, was it manual? Was it automated? How did you all do this? We divided and conquered ahead of time and trusted each team to you know, have a specific task to execute. And that made it possible, I feel like. Mm -hmm. The important thing for your viewers to know is that the annual giving team, the team that's in charge of our annual giving day, there, there's three people right now. 
Um, it's myself, oh, it's, it's my number two, Jim Harris, and then it's a leadership annual giving officer. So when you really talk about the actual build out of giving day in our platform, we were on scale funder. Oh, now we're yeah. utilizing give campus, um, but it's two of us. Um, and so we really rely heavily on our colleagues in marketing and communication, but we also rely heavily in our advancement division as a whole. Right. And so yeah. when we looked at what it was going to take to roll out a squirrel campaign for giving day, uh, I knew I needed a committee of people outside of Gemini because we needed to run giving day. Right. And so knowing the questions mm-hmm. that we get throughout the day on giving day and the fact that, you know, we come into that room at 6 30 AM and we look up and it's 10 AM and then it's 2 PM, you know, like the day just <laughs> flies yeah. by without squirrels. And so without squirrels, without squirrels. and so I just really <laughs> thought about, okay, who are a couple of people within the division that um, are are usually happy to lend a helping hand, but also very organized and able to work Mm -hmm. independently, just kind of knowing what the task is and then can take it and run with it. And so that's what we did. We created, I can't take, um, I can't take responsibility for this name, but they called themselves the squirrel squad. Love it. Yeah. And so the squirrel squad is a people, a a group of people within university advancement, you know, somebody on our operations team, one of our events people, Brooke, of course, in university communications and marketing, our chief of staff um, joined in on that squad. So I'll tell you that Jim and I, the people who run annual giving or yeah, run annual giving and giving day, we're not on the squirrel squad. So it was a a total other team of people in the division that took this thing and ran with it on giving day for us. So Brooke was really in the trenches and can talk about kind of what the process was, you know, on the day. Yeah, I, I, it was great planning in advance on the part of Katie and her team, because we would have all hands meetings in the weeks leading up to this. And once we knew this was something we were going to try to do. So we had, she had us broken out into various committees and and things like that. So that she was like, who wants to do this piece? Who wants to do this piece? And um, so by kind of self-selecting in, you had people that were really ready and engaged because then they can break out into their smaller groups and be like, okay, here's what we need to do. So on the day we're in the you know, the war room, so to speak, or in the control center. It, um, and everyone's in there. And as they're coming in, um, Jim Harris from her team is uh, taking them a, a batch at a time, about an hour. It wasn't always like right on the hour, but a, as they would come in, he would batch out a group of squirrel names straight from Scale Funder and send them over to us. And, you know, obviously some early in the day are going to be a smaller batch. We Again, we weren't really sure what we were going to get. And then as the day started going, we're like, this batch has 250 in it, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. um, and the first year that we were doing it, we we're just, we had a team of people just manually typing names in to uh, a document, like to yeah. the certificate document, and then mailing them out using yes. the form, you know, just the personalized form letter from the squirrels. Um, and then I was tasked with just doing a quick check to make sure, just since it's a higher ed uh, endeavor, wanted to make sure that there was some check on the names because we had heard. Um, oh, one thing that Ole Miss just mentioned is that when you had a lower price point and so a lower investment mm-hmm. in it, um, there were some you know, not just maybe punny names, but more adult content. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so we have long talks about like, you know, freedom of speech and what what are we going to allow and what's in good taste for the university for this. So we did have a backup email that was sort of like, sorry, the, the squirrels are really picky. <laughs> like the squirrels yeah. are really finicky. And then they, we would give them a second chance. And then if they, we didn't like what they sent the second time, we just named the squirrel something iconic for them and something safe. And But they were, I think by having a higher price point yeah. than what they started with at Ole Miss, like we really didn't run into that much. I yeah. There were maybe a few uh, names that just aired on the side of caution, but for yeah. the most part, um, that process was much smoother than I had hoped, but it was just literally Googling things. Most of the names are residence hall names, uh, you know, just yeah. things that every, are just sort of um, jokes or references to professors or people in, in Athens in a loving, good, positive yeah. way. And yeah. so 80% of them, you can just sort of visually be like, I know what that is. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. That's great. Um, I'm a two-time alum, so I was very familiar with the, <laughs> what, the, the lay of the land. Yes. Um, and we were also at that same time capturing some highlights because from each batch, there were some that would just crack us up or that were really touching. Oh. Um, there were actually a number of people who 
um, you know, name them in memorial of someone they'd lost who was an alum or in honor of a professor or in honor of their graduating children. And so it was um, a lot, it was fun and funny, which we had anticipated, but it was also a lot more touching than we maybe knew at the beginning that it would be. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you for some of those examples in just a moment, but I, I just want to point out that I, I expect if someone did put a name in there that was inappropriate and they got an email from a human that's like, are you sure? Oh. Try again. That they'd be like, oh, I thought a computer was going to do this. <laughs> yeah. And like, they would immediately yeah. back out and be like, right. ah, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I love that. Check. That's good. It was either like, really? Because this is a name for my grandson or something. And we're like, oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. you're fine. Or, <laughs> or that. But it was also some internal conversations that I will not share where we're like, okay, group decision, like group gut check. Is this okay? <laughs> like, what are we feeling about this name? And people would be like, ah. You need multi-generational advice in the squirrel yes. squad because... We did pull in the uh, social team who was yeah. a bit younger and was like, is this like a trend we don't know about? <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. So it's sounding like inappropriate names, manual work, uh, or challenges you overcame, kind of trying to figure it out. Were there any other challenges that you had to kind of, whether you were prepared for them or not, that you learned from the first time? You did yeah. Them? So one of the big ones um, that our team saw in annual giving was, um, so what we were trying to do initially was raise money for our um, greatest need fund. So the fund for Ohio oh. is our area of greatest mm-hmm. need, our kind of general support fund and support for that fund gets directed wherever it's needed the most. Um, and so the the deal was, was that it was a gift of 1804 dollars to the fund for Ohio and you could name a squirrel. And we laid that out across our giving day site in a couple of different places. But with the limitations of the system we were using, every donor saw the opportunity to name a squirrel. If they gave 1804 or more, yeah, it didn't matter what Uh, fund they gave to, they saw the opportunity to name a squirrel. And so uh, I think we had like 560 people give to the fund for Ohio, give 1804 or more and name a squirrel. And we sent those people their certificates. But then I could see on Facebook people being like, well, I named the squirrel. Where's my squirrel? And I would go and look at their um, gift in the database and I could see, oh, they gave 1804, but they gave to this scholarship or they gave to that experiential learning fund or that emergency fund. And so the squirrel squad came together and we were like, I think this was a little bit confusing for people. Let's just go ahead and give certificates to anybody who gave 1804 or more if they named a squirrel. And so it took us an extra probably 48 hours to to make those additional because it more than doubled our squirrel number. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was maybe 620 people that named a squirrel that gave to a fund other than the fund for Ohio. Let, let Let them all name squirrels. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And we had also helped automate that process a little bit more. Like we'd created um, some automation that allowed us to just almost mail merge the name. You know, when the batch came through, we checked through the batch to make sure everything was greenlit. And then mm. we could just automate putting those names on those certificates, which we did not do the first year. So we were more ready to scale up knowing how popular it was the last year. We were sort right. of like, well, if we get... 3,000 or 1,000, you know, we're, we're going to be good either way because we just pop them right in there rather than having to manually type them all out. Something else we weren't prepared for but was a positive thing was that people were going to share them on social like immediately. Oh, so we yeah. were not planning to create hundreds of certificates on giving day. But right away that morning where we saw that people were sharing them and people were like, how did you get that? Where did you get that? Wait a minute. I want to do that. And so we were like, oh, my gosh, if we can get these in the hands of the people, they're going to push it out on social. They're creating kind of a a viral situation for us on giving day. And it solved the one of the exact issues that we needed to solve for it was keeping activity coming to our giving day site all day long without a financial investment from us, with having matches or challenges or incentives to give away. It was a downloadable certificate that we were sending to people. And our social team on the fly did create a graphic that said, I named a squirrel today. And we started sending that graphic out with the um, certificates so that if people didn't want to share their actual certificate on their social channels, they could name, they could share that little badge that said that they named a squirrel. Oh, so cute. Yeah. I mean, as I said, like I'd jump 
on board with that. So <laughs> well, and that's what we were finding are people that weren't even necessarily affiliated with the university. Like I took some of my friends that I've known since high school and was just sort of like, this is a fun, you know, like they're like, what are you up to on a totally different group chat? And I'm telling them, oh, it's giving day and we're naming squirrels. And I'm kind of like get, giving them the rundown of what that is. And they're like, we want to name a squirrel. <laughs> and, the, you know, Absolutely. they didn't even go here and they paid to name a squirrel. So everyone I told, like just people in my life, they're like, we'll do that. So, you know, you have a good idea going when people who don't already have an affinity for the university are jumping in to make a donation just so they can get their squirrel certificate. Yeah, I love it. So, uh, Let's talk about the results. I know we've hinted at some of these increases. I mentioned some really impressive numbers up front. Uh, what did you see first year, second year? And then we can get into some more specifics. You know, usually in our giving days, we land somewhere between like seven hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars And we mm -hmm. surpassed a million, which we were not planning for. We did not. That was not Whoa. the cards for us. We did not anticipate that happening. Oh no. So we increased our giving by 447,000 um, wow. the first year of the squirrels and by 752 donors. So no doubt the squirrels had an impact on our giving day. And then of course for next year, we're like, okay, how are we going to do the squirrels and make them bigger and better this year? Um, which we did. And yes. well, and also I'll just jump in long enough yeah. to say we did largely because, you know, I, we, we knew it had been popular and so we were definitely going to consider doing it again, but we weren't sure if there would be enough interest to just go back to back and do it again. But we got a number of emails or like social comments that were just about the campaign and how that we have to do it again and they loved it and how funny the copy was and how great the designs were. And I mean... If you work in higher ed marketing, like outside praise does not come by email that often. <laughs> like, especially not from alumni. <laughs> right. We get, I mean, and we love our alumni and they're great, but I think don't, you know, people don't think to write a note back and be like, hey, I really love this. So just the goodwill that it generated was so strong that I think right away, I, I can't speak for you, Katie, but I think right away we were like, we, we have to do this again. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, Brooke drafted, it was just a piece of art. The email that went out um, announcing the squirrel campaign, I think it was at noon on our first giving day. So she'll have to send that to you. But literally somebody shared that on Facebook and said, I just have to share what my alma mater just sent me for their annual day of giving. It's hilarious. And it is amazing. And when does your fundraising email get shared on social that, you know, with I've people saying, you got to read this, it's, right. it's the best, you know, like that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> that no. doesn't happen. So we saw a, a definite increase in donors and dollars. That first year we had, I think, 1200 and some squirrels named overall. And then in our second year, again, um, we raised, we increased our giving by almost an additional $90,000. We wow. increased our donor count by another 288 donors, um, and we had 1,940 squirrels named. So, wow. you know, it was way bigger than we... And I, I want to tell you, the first year we had an inside um, bet going on. I had a sheet of paper, and everyone that came into our Giving Day War Room, I said, I want you to just kind of guess how many squirrels are going to get named today. And so everyone did. I thought it would be 250. So, you know, the oh. fact that more than a thousand of them were named was not, it was not anywhere, you know, like what we actually thought was going to happen. And the same thing with the next year, right? I thought we'd probably land right around, maybe if we're lucky, if people want it again, right? Then right. maybe we'll land around 1200. But, you know, we hit almost 2000. That's what schools. we weren't sure about. Because we're like, maybe they already have these and they think, oh, it's old hat. But a lot of the people that named them the first year were excited to have another go at it or name them for other people that they were sending them to, you know, which was really sweet. There was mm -hmm. a note that came to us that said, I'll just give the first name. Carmi sent us something and said, my husband bought one and named it after me, LOL. I like the idea that I'm still running around campus 30 years later with a heart. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there was a lot of gifting and a lot of Bobcat oh. love from uh, all over the country and beyond. And so it really was, um, a, a broad appeal. And yeah, we weren't sure the second year if we would get more or less, you know, how to scale it um, and what would go yeah. with it. And I do think we were more prepared having 
gone through it once to not only refine our processes, but just be ready for anything. And we had a, a more proactive social campaign to go along with it. They were out mm-hmm. you know, taking pic. We had little giveaways and things on campus um, that we were concurrently doing just to sort of raise awareness that it was giving day among our students. We, our primary goal was not to get them to give, but more just to know that giving day is a thing and that it's happening. And so we were giving some um, little plush squirrels away. On, and we have oh, cute. some squirrel costumes that were donated by a professor this year. And so I put one of those on along with one of our other um, old guys, uh-huh. one of our other team members. And we walked around and gave out, uh, they had lemonade, I think, and water at the Howard Hall site. And we took pictures and it was amazing. Like just again, the love for the squirrels, like people were running across College Green. they had never seen these costumes before. It's not like our mascot Rufus, who is a bobcat. Like these were just sort of like random squirrel costumes that you're seeing for the first time and in mascot form and they're running over to take selfies with us they're like ohio squirrels oh you squirrels we love it so um we knew it was resonating and again no investment those costumes were randomly donated to us by a faculty (laughs) member and they have gone viral essentially. Brooke, you reminded me of something, Brooke, um, our first giving day that we ran the squirrel campaign, you know, that it wasn't targeted towards students at all. Um, And when the team went out for a celebratory beverage, you know, late that night, I think it was like 11 p.m. We had hit all of our goals. We just, you know, just wanted to celebrate quickly together. We went to a local establishment named Tony's. And uh, while we were waiting for our beverages, one of us looked over and saw that there was a student in the bar naming a squirrel on her phone. And oh. we're all like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> That's us. We're the people that rolled that campaign. Yes. So it trickled down to the student population, oh, even that first love year, it. just naturally. Yeah. I mean, it's just an incredible participation idea, yeah. right? It's just, it's encouraging so many people to give. Uh, what, so almost 2000 squirrels named in year two, do you have any favorite names that came through? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> we do have, so I will say there's a great number and I won't read the names here just for privacy sake, but there's a ton of in memoriam names, which is very sweet. Mm-hmm. And one said, um, one was named with the first and last name. And then it said the flying squirrel. And it said, this is for a recently deceased Ohio grad who studied aviation and fulfilled his lifelong Aww. dream of becoming a professional pilot, which was very sweet. Then we have them in, you know, there's dedications um, to you know, grandma or, or to the Russ College of Engineering or an OU professor whose attention, mentorship and encouragement changed the course of my career in my life. Oh, wow. We had a number of local icons and places, Rufus, Lil Rufus, um, Sir Cutler. Uh, we had Posty. Our student newspaper is called The Post. Uh, oh, so cute. We had a lot of Post. Um, squirrel a lot homes. of res- I like Squirrel Yeah, homes. Squirrel Lock Homes. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so we had yeah, Mr. Jeff Hill, Sir Templeton, Jackie O. Um, and then named for some of our student athletes at the time, Jason Preston. Um, and then we had... Uh, some bygone places like, you know, some residence halls that no longer oh. exist or some places of town that no longer exist. So that was cool. We had some A-list squirrels, just flat out, no pun, just Josh Groban was a squirrel. <laughs> uh, Maya Angelou, Phil Collins, Edward Cullen of Twilight fame. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, well, they were all represented. Uh, but my personal favorites were definitely the, um, the puns, I think for sure. Uh, so we, we had a ton of those and, Bitey was Bitey was great. The the person that was in charge of our giving day video last year utilized AI to create mm. um, images of the squirrels with some of the more fun names that we got the previous year. Um, so we'll have to send you those days oh. so that you can see them because they are hilarious. I printed them and turned them into stickers and gave them to people on giving day because they oh are so amazing. Gosh. Yeah. We also had James Squirrel Jones and Tail Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> uh, just, you know, a lot of really good ones. Yeah, I love it. It's also like, you know, when you when you look at it from like a user research, like audience research perspective, too, like you can see what people are connected to, what Absolutely. brings them back to campus, right? Like there's a little bit of a like a content strategy thing hidden in these names. 
Absolutely. Too. And that was something we talked a little bit about um, when we talk about audience segmentation mm -hmm. and something we may do again a little bit more in the future if we continue along with this idea, which I think we will. Um, it was just sort of the idea that there were the post is a great example that we had a lot of squirrel names around the post or the marching 110, which is our marching band. And so mm -hmm. um, we thought about doing some segmented emails about naming squirrels just to that group and mm -hmm. highlighting the funds that were, you know, the post fund or the marching 110 fund, um, the things that would be closest to their hearts. Yeah. Great idea. And it did get uh, more buy-in for me and the work that I do um, from our boards. Right. So I've been kind of going on tour with the um, advisory boards in each of the academic units. They want to know how they can get their alumni involved in giving days. So many of them personally got a certificate and they're like, these are great. I'm so glad I did this. You know, even the email that you sent me when I got my certificate was hilarious. You know, how can we make more of our alumni aware um, and get them to give on giving day? And so for me, it's it's been it's helped me to educate more of our kind of internal stakeholders about the work that we do in the Office of Annual Giving. Of yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, thank you both so much for sharing these specifics, uh, how to make this happen, how it worked for you. I really hope to see it more across our industry uh, because I, I honestly do think it's such a great way to encourage that gift giving participation and start building that habit. Uh, do you have any final words of advice for anyone who might want to try this? I'll just say I've I've had um, many fundraisers come to me since we launched our first squirrel campaign and asked, okay, how did you do this? And so with just a handful of things, you can do it, right? If you have a, an editable PDF certificate, mm -hmm. you've got, you know, some email copy that you can send out day of to make people aware that you're doing mm -hmm. it. And then the email copy that you're sending with the certificate. Uh, I mean, those are like the basic, basic mm -hmm. pieces. And you've got, you know, a squirrel campaign. Um, some Another school did it with geese. So it's kind of like thinking about, oh, you know, what is yeah. it on your campus that people are going <laughs> to resonate with? We probably all have squirrels, but, you know, maybe there are some viral animals. Yeah. You know, my local university it has geese. Yeah. I think that would be great Perfect. here. Yes. <laughs> we'll yeah. I think another school did turtles. So, you know, it doesn't have oh, to be squirrels. Gosh. So cute. Yeah. So when is the next giving day? April 2nd. Mark your calendars, right. everyone. Mark Everybody, your just to name a squirrel. I will be naming a squirrel between now and then. My my challenge is to come up with a name that's related to talking tactics. So then you'll see it come up. Well, and and day if you check your inbox, uh, Brooke and I symbolically named one of our college screen squirrels Day as a thank you oh, for spending really? this time with us today. Oh my yes. gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I'm going to find a way to link that in the show notes for folks. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, thank you both so much. Uh, what a great episode. If folks want to contact you and ask you, you know, for tips or share anything, where can they find you? I can be found on LinkedIn. Yes. Same. Katie all right. Albert. That's the place. Yep. That's the place where we all go. So your LinkedIn's will also be shared in the show notes. And thank you, listeners. That's the end of our episode today. Make sure you follow and subscribe to keep walking the walk and talking the tactics. The Talking Tactics Podcast is part of the Enrollify Podcast Network. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month. And we've got a plethora of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our shows help higher ed marketers and admissions pros find their next big idea and feature a selection of the industry's bests as your hosts, like Jamie Hunt, Allison Tercio, Jenny Lee Fowler, Jeremy Tears, and so many of your other favorite leaders in higher ed, too. And Rollify is made possible by Element 451, the leading AI-powered, all-in-one student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Check them out at element451.com.